Welcome back guys to episode 5 of the Steakhouse series. Today we're going to finally cook a steak. First we're going to start out by making some horseradish cream. You're going to need about a cup of sour cream, two tablespoons of horseradish, two tablespoons of sherry vinegar, and salt and pepper to taste. Give this all a mix and then hold until you're ready to use it. It should be good for about a week to two weeks. For the asparagus, I like to cut them about one to two inches from the bottom. Then I like to peel the asparagus because the skin's going to get kind of stringy and it also looks a lot better on the plate. Now it's time to blanch the asparagus in salted boiling water. I always salt the water right before I use it because then I know it's seasoned. I blanch this asparagus for two minutes before removing it to an ice bath and draining on paper towels. This can be done several hours ahead of time. For two people, I'm using two small russet potatoes to make my whipped potatoes. First, you're going to want to peel the potato skins and then cut them into equal sized pieces. Add the potatoes to cold salted water and then bring them to a simmer. Going from cold to hot water makes the potatoes cook evenly. They won't retain water or fall apart. And if the water is at a rapid boil, it can break up the potatoes. Now we're going to cut up some butter, or if you want to be a little bit healthy, use olive oil. When the potatoes are soft, drain them from the water and let them steam for a minute. Add the butter to the steamy potatoes and then pass them through a ricer or use a potato masher. Once all the potatoes are riced, add in the cream or milk and whisk over low heat and season with salt. Lit up the potatoes and they can be held hot for about an hour. For the creamed corn, we're going to start by getting our box grater and two peeled corn. We're going to grate the corn on our box grater, which is perfect because it's going to get enough juice extracted and also grind the corn. After all the corn is ground, we're going to add some butter and salt and that is it. If the corn gets a little too thick you can always add a little bit of water. I would stay away from using cream because it might just mute the flavor. This is a bone-in rib chop. It is about a pound and a half. I brought the steak out about two hours before I decided to cook it to get it to room temperature. I like to season my steaks with salt and pepper on both sides. Now for the last 10 minutes I've had a cast iron pan heating up over medium high heat. I'm going to add in some high heat neutral oil to the pan and it should smoke just a little. I'm going to tilt the pan slightly away from myself and then add the steak to a dry portion of the pan away so I don't splash myself. We're going to let the steak sear for about two minutes before we do anything else. At this time, I'm going to start heating up my creamed corn over medium heat. We're going to stir occasionally so that the corn doesn't stick and burn to the bottom of the pan. To flip the steak over, you're going to want to tilt the pan towards yourself and then flip the steak away into the drier part of the pan so no oil splashes. Add in a large knob of butter and some crushed garlic cloves and then 
tilt the pan towards yourself and baste. We're going to remove the steak now to a plate and I like to leave a fork or a spoon underneath just so it gets a little bit of airflow. Drain out the fat from the pan and roast the asparagus in the hot pan until there's a light char on the asparagus. Plate the asparagus and season with good olive oil and crunchy salt. Plate your hot creamed corn and season with black pepper, extra virgin olive oil, and crunchy sea salt. Plate your hot with potatoes and put a pattern on it if you like. For the steak, I'm going to slice it to make it easier to share. Place the steak on a very hot plate and sprinkle with some crunchy sea salt. Serve sizzling. Be careful not to burn yourself. And there you have it. A rib chop, cream corn, asparagus, and whipped potatoes. And don't forget your creamed horseradish. Pour yourself some wine and enjoy your dinner. All right, guys, that's it. That is our steak dinner. Uh, beautiful bone and rib chop that we got. Uh, it was a dry aged bone and rib chop I got from the market. Bristol Farms. <clears throat> now, you don't have to have a hot sizzling planner, but you know, like I said on the last episode with the Dover Soul, it is kind of like a little bit of a show, so it is nice to have that sizzling platter with the meat coming out and the noise and the little popping and all that stuff. And it just builds up that experience and it leaves you wanting more experiences like that. For side dishes, anything that's seasonal, anything that you like is going to be fantastic. The star of the show is the steak. Put it up on a pedestal, season it right, cook it right, enjoy it with the right person. Well, that's it for me for this episode of the Steakhouse series. The next one is going to be our last one for season one. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, comment uh, to see what you want to see next. And share with your friends. Catch you guys next time.